I'm David Petro from David Petro Casting and the executive director and creator of Broadway Breakthrough, the premier performing arts workshop. Today's session is going to be how to build your professional musical book and the nine songs you must have in that audition book. I've come up with a theory of nine songs that you have to have in your musical book. Your musical book is your own personal notebook that has all of your audition material in your book that's perfectly selected just for you, your talent, your voice. So we're going to talk about nine different genres of songs that there's never been a musical written outside of these nine genres. So that if you get called to uh, audition for a country western musical, you have your piece, you could go in right now and be brilliant. And this is how we take that audition from an audition to a performance level at all times. So let's get into the nine different genres of songs that you need in your musical book to ace your audition every single time. So the first genre of music we're gonna talk about is classical musical theater. People get really caught up in classical musical theater because they think that they have to go to the old school, which is still phenomenal, Rodgers and Hammerstein, uh, Cole Porter, older type of material. Um, there are a lot of contemporary composers that write classical music. Adam Gettle, Michael John Chesa, Andrew Lippa, who write great classical pieces um, that are more contemporary. So especially for our younger performers to be uh, performing some of the older material, even though it's so important for you to know your musical history and know where this music came from, and it's still performed all the time. Um, currently, uh, we just had Cinderella on Broadway, um, and we have a lot of, and Sound of Music, just, and Peter Pan, they all just were live um, performances on NBC, so they're still used all the time, and it's important to know them. But sometimes the themes for our younger performers can be a little um, too of the older style, you know, there's those, and they're generally played by adult characters. So my opinion, or my preference as a contemporary casting director is to go to a more contemporary composer who is writing the music for that classical type of voice. So I'm looking for a type of voice, not a type of song. Um, for the ladies, I need a nice, beautiful soprano voice with the full range and vibrato and the quality that you would take in a classical, almost operatic um, singing class. For the gentlemen, it's the same thing. It is that full classical voice, not pop inflections and holding your vibrato. You want to go fully free with that beautiful place sound, um, but still sounding like you. You'll need a classical up-tempo and a classical ballad. Um, moving to the next one, which is uh, probably one of the most important pieces that you have into your musical book, which is contemporary musical theater. Contemporary musical theater for me is anything that's been written from 1970 forward. Um, examples of contemporary musical theater would be your um, Wicked, your Hairspray, your Legally Blonde, your Hair, um, Pippin. All of those are examples of contemporary musical theater, and you're going to need a ballad and you're going to need an um tempo. The downfall that we experience in our uh, contemporary musical theater is that um, most of the people go to the same material over and over, which is really, really um, a disservice to you. You want to find a piece of music that is so specific for you and your voice that not everybody is doing. And a lot of times in all of our cities outside of New York, the music sort of funnels down, so it'll be on Broadway, and then one person will go see it, and then they'll listen to the music, and then you love it because your friend is singing it, and you'll want to sing it too. Um, this is where we get into a little bit of trouble. A lot of times also, if you're doing a very famous contemporary piece, where some of these great, um, our great Broadway ladies, Sutton Foster or Idina Menzel, have created them, and it's so in our head as that person, and so you're setting yourself up for failure because, frankly, if I wanted Idina Menzel, I could call her on the phone and put her in a Broadway show. Um, so I need you to find something that is just perfect for you, not somebody else. And so when picking your contemporary musical theater piece, you need to find something that sometimes isn't the most famous and definitely not the most signature song. Um, and, and that we stay away from the things that are way too popular by one particular artist. So we have a classical up-tempo and ballad. We have a contemporary up-tempo and ballad. Here's one of my very favorites, which is pop music. 
A lot of times musical theater or classical singers will shy away from pop music and you're really um, doing yourself a big injustice because the pop music is where there's so much out there. And for younger performers, this is um, should be more exciting because you know it a lot better. You're, you're more uh, used to the library of pop music. So finding a great pop song that is both a ballad and an up-tempo again is phenomenal to sing. The secret to finding pop music is to find a voice that is really similar to your own. If you can sing like Kelly Clarkson, God bless you, then let's look at some Kelly Clarkson stuff. If your voice range and quality is more like a pink, then go that. If it's more of an R&B sound, like a Jordan Sparks, then go there. Um, so it's whatever piece of music sounds more like you, and then you've got the range, and you've got the quality, and then the other piece is that it really sounds good on a piano. Because most of the time, you will only be singing with a piano in a room. So um, making sure that that's played out well and sounds good there. I will tell you, I'm sure that you all are phenomenal singers, and everybody out there in the world, you're a phenomenal singer, but there are very few people who can sing like Adele. For a while, Adele couldn't even sing like Adele, and she had to have voice surgery. So stay away, away from those things, uh, mainly that Adele 21 album that everybody was singing with someone like you and everything else like that. It's one of the best songs out there, but nobody, maybe one other person in the world who I haven't met yet, um, can sing Adele music like Adele sings it. Um, we're moving down now into our country. So country is so important and it sounds so silly to think, oh, I need a country song too. But yes, you must have a country song. It's actually exciting to have country music. Um, there's been quite a few musicals um, that have been written in um, that country vein. So, um, and uh, one of the uh, most important things and exciting things about country music is they're what we like to call story songs. What story songs are, it means that you're taking one that has a, a story, a song, excuse me, that gives you the full range of a character and a theme and an idea and country songs um, really give you that. There's an old joke out there that's, um, a, Country music is, my dog died, and my wife left me, and my trailer fell down. Well, it is a joke, but it's also really true in the way that country music is written because they tell you everything. Um, take example of the Carrie Underwood song, um, Jesus Take the Wheel. Do you guys know this song, Jesus Take the Wheel? It's really, really famous. She tells you from the minute that that song starts, you know, she's driving in the car and that the car is all wet and she strapped her baby down and the baby's in there and the wheels are turning. She tells you every single detail of what's going on, almost as if you were reading a book. Well, as an actor, that's exciting because country songs really give you the ability to find a character and to be a character and to tell a story. And that's what's exciting about country, but also you're gonna need it because there have been several musicals written um, in the country music world. Um, the next is 50s, 60s. 50s, 60s song is so, so important because you look at shows like Hairspray and Memphis. These are all shows that were written in that, by the birdie um, in that 1950s style. So you need to find a nice 1950s song um, that is just perfect for you. And the secrets to that is it should be an up-tempo song. You don't need a ballad in this area. Um, it should be light and it should be fun. A place to go to that's really exciting about 50s, 60s music is the world of Motown. I mean, they have such a catalog of music in Motown. Um, for ladies, it's phenomenal with the Supremes and the Ronettes and the Chiffons. And for the guys, there's Otis Redding and... Um, Marvin Gaye and all these phenomenal artists to sing from that not only are great stories, but they're actually really, really fun to sing and they're really great for your voice. I'd recommend for the men to stay away from Elvis. Um, the vocal range isn't a lot and almost every single one of his songs are so geared towards Elvis and his voice and his legacy. Um, so I would steer away from that where a lot of people actually go to Elvis for the guy singers, but I would um, stay away from that. Here's the biggie. We know and we love Disney. Everybody has to have a Disney song. And there's so many reasons why to have a Disney song. Um, and this is actually really exciting because they have phenomenal music. First, Disney on Broadway is, is the biggest producing house for um, musicals at all. 
we have Aladdin and Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. Lion King is the largest grossing show in the history of all, not just movies, actually films too. It's in the, I think it's, I might be making this up, but it's somewhere in the $5 billion since it's opened um, that they've made um, Lion King going as one of the biggest hits. So um, not only is there a Disney on Broadway that is never going away, it's gonna be there for years and years and years, newsies, I mean, there's so many. Um, the other thing that's so important about Disney music is the same writers who are writing for those Disney shows and movies and theatrical productions are also writing for Broadway. So uh, lyricists and um, composers like Alan Menken not only did uh, Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, he's also written a bunch of other Broadway shows. Tim Rice, who wrote the lyrics with um, Alan Menken, also wrote the lyrics for Fan of the Opera, Evita, um, uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. So the same uh, artists that are writing for these Disney shows are actually writing for Broadway shows too. Um, Stephen Schwartz, Stephen Schwartz who wrote the music for Pippin and Wicked um, and Godspell also wrote the music for Pocahontas. Um, so if you find a great Disney song, it's actually gonna translate to a great Broadway contemporary song as well. So our nine songs, just to recap one more time, you're gonna have a contemporary, um, I'm sorry, a <coughs> classical musical theater ballad and up-tempo. You're gonna have a contemporary musical theater ballad and up-tempo. You're going to have a pop, a uh, ballad, and up-tempo. You're going to have a country song, a 50s, 60s song, and a Disney song. Um, so those are the nine types of songs that you must have in your musical book with you at all times. Um, and then you're going to have them in three different versions. So the three versions that you need to have your song in is a, the full song, you need to have the 32 bar cut, and by bars, I mean measures. So that means one measure is one count, two measures is two, all the way through so that you count 32. And then you need to have what we call an eight bar cut. Um, an eight bar is just eight different measures, or I'm sorry, a 16 bar cut, 16 bar cut. So that 16 bar cut um, is just 16 full measures. Your 32 bar cut is what you're gonna use more than any other time in auditioning. So in your 32 bars, you wanna pick the very best piece of the music that shows off your acting, shows off your vocal range. It's that best part, the part that you love to sing, which is generally a chorus of a song and what we call the bridge of the song, or it's the second verse and the chorus could be the end and you count backwards. So whatever that best part that you wanna have in the song, count backwards. 32 measures, and you want to have that cut down so that you have um, the 32 bars in perfect line without arrows and pointing and all sorts of directions so that when that accompanist looks at that piece of music that it's very, very clean. So three different ways. It is your um, full song, your 32 bar cut, and then your 16. And you're going to take your musical theater audition book, which is a notebook, and you're going to have at the very front page is a table of contents. So in that table of contents, it should have your um, name, your email address, and then we're going to list in the table of contents just like we listed these nine types of songs. So it'll say classical musical theater, and then it'll say the title of your classical musical theater piece. It'll say contemporary musical theater and then the name of your ballad and your up-tempo piece right next to it. And all the way down with your nine different genres of songs. So that way, when you're in an audition room and you're performing something and somebody says, well, that was a great contemporary up-tempo song. What is your pop ballad? And instead of flipping through your book, you can just list it right from your table of contents. It's also so important, if you ever lose your musical book, that they will have that table of contents that will show you the email address that they'll be able to return their book to you after that. The last piece that you need of this is you need to have each piece separated by notebook tabs. Just like you would in school or for your job presentation, you would have your tabs that say classical musical theater, flip that divider, contemporary musical theater ballad, flip that divider, so that you can easily flip right to each song when necessary. That binder should have pockets in the front and the back. 
In that front side, you would have your pictures and resumes, three to five headshots and resumes in the front. Nothing in the back of your book unless you are at a callback and we gave you material that you should prepare. That is the only thing that should go in the back of that binder. So in the front, it's the headshots and resumes, your uh, table of contents, your dividers separating each one of these nine genres of songs, and then in the back, nothing in that back pocket except if there's callback material. So that is how you build your audition book and how you present yourself to be an absolute pro when walking into a musical theater audition.